Hi. Records this video to give you an idea how to operate the chemical workbench for zero. Here is a welcome page showing the startup options. For now, just close it. At the upper part of the main window, you can see the menus and toolbars. They usually double functions of each other. At this video, I'm going to create a project which models an interaction of oxygen and carbon at a closed batch reactor. For this, I press the menu File, the New. In the New Project dialog, you can see the different types of projects. Select the Gas Chemistry Kinetic one. I choose the subtype, the calorimetric bomb reactor of PT type, and input the project name. Then click OK to save the project in the default CVB folder. The choice of the reactor type is not critical, you can always change it any time later. Now, at the left hand side, you can see the structure of the task. It has a mechanism with the list of substances and reactions, the input stream, the reactor and calculation parameters, and also the output and external data folders. I'd like to mention now that many of visual interface elements have pop-up menus, which are accessible by the right mouse button click on the element. And these menus can contain very useful and unique commands. For example, click at the calculation node with the right mouse button and pick the edit reaction chain command. Now, at the right side you can see the lists of reactors available in chemical workbench and the icon of the currently using closed batch reactor at the center. The replacement of one reactor with another is easy. Just find the new reactor in the reactor list, then drag and drop it at the old one. You can see how the structure of the required data changes the gear with the reactor replacement. Now we will compose a problem to solve. There are several ways of the mechanism composing, but I will demonstrate only the shortest one. And I will start from filling the input stream first. Open the input stream node. I want carbon and oxygen to be the input. Right click on the substances fraction table, then add and type C. Enter. I say no to the suggestion. The same thing I do with oxygen. Then I put the fractions. The fraction of units are moles. You can see that in the stream properties. I have to fill the flow rate and temperature. In the current task, we will not affect the calculation, so we can put any numbers there. The input stream is completed. Now open the substances node. The number of substances which can be formed in the reactions, even in case of carbon and oxygen, is big enough. One can tape them all in a way that we used in the input stream, but there is a shorter way. Right click at the table area and pick the add substances from database command. This function searches elements in the input stream substances and then it will search in the database for the substances composed of the found elements. We limit the search by the gas phase and zero electrical charge. Click OK and in a few seconds the list of substances is ready. I can check the list, add or delete substances. For example, I can remove the ozone from the calculation, the carbon chains and some others. The similar thing I do with reactor, uh, reactions. Right click and go down to the command add reactions from database. At this time the program will search in the database for the reactions which contain the substances from our substances list. When you compose your own chemical mechanism, you need to check the completeness of this reaction system, remove or add and describe some reactions. In a demonstration video, I will not perform such a check, but I will remove some reactions which have not enough data for calculation. The other folders contain computation or model parameters. Usually, they are filled with the default values. I want to say only about the model parameters, containing the parameters of our reactor. In our case, the default figures are 300 kelvins and 1 atmosphere pressure. Now the input is complete. I can verify it by pressing this tick button. As you can see, there are some warnings, but they are not critical and chemical workbench can handle them. 
Now I run the calculation and wait until the progress bar is passed through and the word success appears in the status bar. Here it is. Tables with the calculation results appears in the results folder of Project Explorer. The main is the general results table. In our case it contains the time marks, the substances concentrations, the reaction intensities and the values of the thermodynamic potentials. I'm going to plot the graphs. Find the plots folder at the Project Explorer and right click on it. Press Add. A new empty frame appears and I go to the Curves Editor. First I select the table with my data. In general results uh, the columns of that table are shown as strings at the curve set selector. I mark time as an x-axis and I want the substances uh, to be plotted as y. Add new curves. Here it is, not very impressive yet, but usually we plot such graphs in the double logarithmic scale. So click at any axis. I make the horizontal and vertical axis logarithmic. And also I want to change the starting point of the y-axis. I remove the automatic mark and change the beginning of the axis. Now it's fine. I can see the curves and highlight them. I can play with the calculation a little bit more. I go back to the model parameters and change the reactor conditions like for example to 10 atmospheres of pressure and temperature say 1300 gallons. No checks, just run the calculation again, wait for a moment. Well, the calculation is complete. We come back to the graph, it's replotted already and we can see the changes. Alright, in a few minutes we have set and calculated a problem. At this video you saw the main stages of work with Chemical Workbench 4.0. Enjoy and see you next time.